exciting to be here at InterSolar Middle East in Dubai in the year 2017 because we can really s uh, feel the excitement that now finally when costs for solar PV has come down so much there's a lot of interest in uh, going ahead with plans which are partly already a few years old which had never been realized. So major milestones in the Middle East in 2017 so far have been another $30 per megawatt hour photovoltaic contract, which does look vaguely achievable now. I know this has been widely reported as a $24.2 per megawatt hour contract, but it's actually more like 29.9 after you include the fact that the project will get paid 1.6 times the base rate between June and September every year. And that project is under construction, apparently on schedule. The other thing is that there continues to be a bubbling up of little tenders, little, little programs. So Jordan, Egypt are both starting to build projects in a big way. Dubai's net metering scheme has apparently hit 20 megawatts. Uh, Saudi's built a few hundred megawatts by now. It looks like the Middle East is starting to finally take off. I think the main milestone that we've seen this year is the announcement of uh, Dewa's 700 megawatt uh, concentrating solar power plant, uh, which came in at $73 per megawatt hours. And um, the interesting thing about uh, this plant is that it basically provides nighttime solar energy through the integrated thermal uh, uh, energy system, energy storage system. Uh, so during the day, we have electricity from uh, photovoltaics. And then at night, that's complemented with uh, CSP. And, and, and these two types together in, in Dubai have a mixed energy price of five cents per kilowatt hours. And that, again, will open up new possibilities because it's, it's going to be so cost effective that the question will be, what are we going to do with this energy? And one of the uh, avenues, one of the energy pathways for the future uh, is, in my view, hydrogen. And what you can do now is, is also produce cost-effectively hydrogen in this region, and you can do many things with it. It can be a, a base uh, feedstock for the chemical industry. Uh, you can uh, bulk transport it to other places on the planet where you need um, this type of energy. And of course, you can use it in transport uh, in fuel cell vehicles. And I think this is going to be the next exciting thing in this region. Uh, year 2017 has been a great year uh, for the solar PV industry in Middle East. Uh, we have seen uh, almost eight countries coming out with large scale tenders. Uh, you have uh, Jordan, you have Egypt, Dubai, Bahrain, Qatar, uh, Abu Dhabi. Sterling and Wilson presently is executing 1.2 gigawatt uh, project in Abu Dhabi. And we are expecting to complete this project in the next one and a half year. Uh, Sterling and Wilson has been present in the region for the last five years, uh, not only in solar, uh, but in multiple fields. Uh, for solar, we started focusing on Middle East in 2014, and uh, finally in 2017, uh, we have got more than 1.5 gigawatt of projects under execution. The biggest news in the Middle East solar industry has to be the emergence of solar storage. What we have just witnessed with the DIWA award is that solar can now provide storage for up to 15 hours at night which is a huge game changer. And I think this will revolutionize solar across the Middle East and uh, Africa, which is very, very exciting. We've seen that the solar market actually has grown, you know, like uh, even bigger than before uh, in two ways. Uh, I think the first way was uh, through the very large projects where we've seen uh, still, you know, like uh, utility scale solar projects being delivered, awarded at a uh, uh, lower tariff than before. So uh, either on the PV system or on the CSP, I think this is a great achievement to see that uh, the solar uh, electricity is becoming actually that competitive. Uh, on the other hand, we've seen also that the distributed generations are like slowly picking up uh, uh, through a solar rooftop, especially in the UAE and also in Jordan. And uh, some of the countries, you know, like, uh, like Oman and other countries have decided also like to put in place a regulatory framework to stimulate this market as well. In 2017, our company, Siraj Power, who is a, a developer, financer, and operator of solar rooftop solutions, uh, have continued to grow and to uh, establish itself you know, in, the, in the UAE market to start. We've built the first solutions and signed you know, new contracts uh, 
under a finance model um, and, uh, and the market is, is growing and then we are one of the leader in this market. Looking ahead to 2018, I think that what we'll see is more and more countries uh, coming to the market and instead of uh, launching tenders for thermal or coal based power plants, we will see those being replaced with solar because whilst some of these countries may not have either gas or coal, in the Middle East, one resource that they all have is solar. And now, with the onset of uh, nighttime uh, solar storage, we can see solar becoming the preferred source of electricity for 24 hours a day. What we'd like to see in 2018 would be continued progress on actually delivering projects in Egypt under the tender process that has been done before. Plus some new auctions in Saudi Arabia to start really kicking that market off. And for actual delivery to happen on some of the, the photovoltaic plants around the place. In 2018, I'm expecting that Stellingen Wilson will be working in more than 10 countries uh, in Middle East, uh, which is a milestone in itself. You know, you will see large scale tenders coming out very rapidly. The deployment rate on ground is going to go up. So 2018 is going to be an absolutely eventful uh, year for the solar PV industry in Middle East. So building on the experience, building on the breakthrough that we have uh, with uh, the pricing and the technology of solar in the region, uh, combined with uh, the cost-effective production of, of hydrogen, I think there is very interesting opportunities uh, with regard to, for example, uh, Expo 2020, which is uh, an, an excellent opportunity. There will be 25 million visitors in Dubai, uh, and I think to basically showcase the value chain that you take sunshine, you take water, you produce hydrogen, and, y and you create an ecosystem of not just energy, but also uh, ke chemical industry, um, you know, in a clean way, using the physical uh, and intellectual infrastructure that you have in the, in the oil and gas region that, that we are, I think it would be fantastic to also showcase that at, at the Expo 2020. What will surprise us in 2018? Uh, um, what I don't know, I, I think that uh, what will surprise us is that uh, to see that the solar power is understood to be a very viable source of energy uh, for <coughs> you know, utility companies, uh, but also for commercial industrial clients that actually could, uh, could save money uh, through solar. Um, so, um, is that would be a surprise, I don't know, but we'll see, I think, this market growing tremendously uh, in the next years and in particularly uh, uh, starting from 2018. So, our company uh, should actually more than double, you know, for the next years uh, and also deliver even more innovative solutions uh, other than solar rooftop, whether through hybrid solutions, solar floating systems uh, or, you know, solar tiles. So, this is what you will see in 2018. Uh, in the market and, uh, and we steer out power. For Access Power, looking ahead to 2018, what we see is uh, not just the Middle East growing up, but other emerging markets such as Africa. And the beauty of Dubai and the UAE is that the country is perfectly placed to tap into all these markets and to become a hub for the African solar market. And we hope to play a very active role in meeting the demand across Africa, right here from Dubai. I expect that as a result of this intersolar meeting and other events going uh, along this year, we get really a very uh, creative and exciting time in the implementation of solar projects because globally solar energy will be much faster developing than anybody expected. Now we can expect the 100 gigawatt market to be already achieved in 2018. The optimists among us had expected this for 2020. And this means, of course, uh, all regions of the Earth, and especially regions which have plenty of sunshine and which have investment capital available, are getting into this very quickly. So I think we will see now very exciting times ahead of us. And I think InterSolar has been a very important milestone in uh, going ahead this way.